All right, continue, shall we? Oh, there should be a door over here. Yeah. It's only level five. Yeah. There's uh, there's some ammo and shit behind there. Random place for a door. There's no other door. There's just that one door. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, isn't it? Okay, so I think we have to do another speech check. We need everyone on high alert. It's not only the pro ogs who might want to get a taggart, but the ones against them too. You're saying? Oh yeah, of course. Taggart's here, isn't he? Yay! You know what? Actually, I might just go around unlocking all these doors just because. What do I um, have for this? Let's buy this. Because fuck it, and I'm gonna buy this before I regret it. There. Yeah, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to go around unlocking all the doors I can, because you don't want to see that. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. Oh, righty -o. All done. I hacked the folk out of every single computer, even, even Pritchard's, because, fuck him. Yeah, so the code for that helicopter storage unit is in Malik's office on her computer. And we did get quite a few. I did level up. Uh, I spent it to max out my stealth. Um, stealth. My uh, my hacking because you need level five to hack Pritchard's computer. And Pritchard's computer is quite funny. He uh, he proposes a show um, to Pikes TV about him basically. It's so stupid. It's, it's apparently like it's it's fifth time or something that he's proposed this idea. It's just like, dude, man, he wants a TV show based on him. It's like, think you think it's think you think he is a main character? Twat. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk to Pritchard. This is, this is in fact a side quest you can miss, but it comes into play when you come back uh, later on. Um, to all the cameras. Cool. What do you want? As much as I hate to admit it, I need your help. That signal you shut down in DRB territory. It's been active for almost a year. You're telling me someone outside this company has had access to our network since before the first attack? I've detected intrusions before and shut them down swiftly every time. But whoever designed this particular algorithm is good. Very good. You've told Sarif? See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it, specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. Very suspicious. We have to come. We have to confront him. So, yeah, if you don't talk to Pritchard, then you can't do the speech check with Sarif, and then which then locks you off getting information for the next quest, which happens when you come back later. And it basically gives you information on Jensen's um, background, basically how where he grew up, his parents and stuff, which is a lot of information that you would miss, which is very odd. Like the hide all the information to the character you're controlling behind a side quest that you can miss. Very odd. But, let's talk to these dumbasses. Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, oh, my mistake. But it 
must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. This guy's a twat. I'm going to stay cool because it's, it's so annoying. You know what? Fuck it. My memories are none of your damn business. My memories are none of your damn business, Taggart. Did I hit a nerve? Forgive me. It's my nature as a psychologist, I suppose, to want to ask the difficult questions. You see, I find that ignoring them doesn't make them go away. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. Uh, yeah. Gladly. I really don't like talking to William Taggart. It's, like, I don't like talking to hardly any people in this game. They're all stuck-up twats. This guy's a dumbass. And the news is, I want to talk to Sandoval because... If you remember when we um when we in fact do we even have that email now? There was a um there was a an email we got. I think it was in the police station. No, I don't I don't think we can. Um Let me try and find it. There we go. Yeah, this th this here talks about Zeke Sanders, you know, Agato Ezekiel Sanders. So this guy, he got I think he got orgs after he was injured in um, in the military, left eye tattoos and stuff, and he had him removed because he went a bit crazy and started injuring thirteen people. Right, remember that. What's this guy's second name? You're Taggart's aide, aren't you? Dr. Isaiah Sandoval, isn't it? No need to play ignorant, Mr. Jensen. I am quite sure you have a file on me that's as thick as the one you have on Mr. Taggart. You're an outspoken activist in your own right, Dr. Sandoval. When you have seen the things that I have, you find you have no choice but to stand up and be counted. <laughs> that guy in the background. Surprised an ex Look at that cash. ...isn't more disturbed by the dangers of this technology. Augmentations help a lot of people, Doc. Handicapped, war vets. Yes, but at what cost? My own friend had his life ruined by these so-called enhancements of yours a man much like you who had no choice but to become augmented yet once he was too much power can make you do terrible things mr jensen i suggest you think long and hard on that yes i'll just have all of my augments removed and become dead yes so yeah ask about his his friend we don't know who his friend is now surely not um surely you do I'd like to hear more about your friend, Dr. Sandoval. What exactly did he do? Nothing. Was he injured in the Gulf? He went on a rampage in a shopping mall, if you must know, hoping to be gunned down by the police rather than face a lifetime battling augmentation addiction. He was addicted to augments? They don't talk about it in those corporate brochures of yours, do they? Neuropathy dependency, rejection psychosis, any number of physical and psychological ills have resulted from this technology, and yet, we rarely hear a word about them. I'm sure the literature is out there. No thanks to the throng of corporate lawyers attempting to stop it. Your friend, did he succeed? Did he suicide by cop? No. Bill Taggart talked him down. Yeah, so his, 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 his friend. Yeah, Zeke's his brother, basically. That's, and he's talking about Zeke went to the shopping mall and tried to get killed by a cop because he was addicted to augments. Well, not augments, but neuropathy. I mean, I don't, I don't know how obvious it is, but his second name is Sandoval, the same as Zeke's, and he talks about a friend going to the shopping mall, and Zeke's file in the police station states he was stopped in, after injuring 13 people. You know? The more you know. You've been at this company a long time. I hope that's not a comment about my age, Adam. No, but I know nothing gets by you. If Sarif had done something that could compromise us. Mr. Sarif has only the best interests of this company in mind, Adam. I'm not questioning that. Aren't you? I've been here since the beginning. I've seen how he built this up from nothing. He cares for his people. He truly believes what we're doing is important. And he would never do anything to jeopardize it. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, you shouldn't have. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. Wow. Somebody's got a stick up their ass. You know what you need? You need to have that stick removed, you stuck up bastard. Actually, actually, 
Mr. Saraf is much more dirty than you fucking think is, darling. What a what a what a stuck up cow. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? Sorry, <laughs> what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Oh, I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board. Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it, too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. But the important thing is, you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. The first thing you always do is refocus. It adds plus two to your invisible, um, successful check. I want to, believe me. I want to catch these guys as badly as you do. But that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've had access to. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry if I seem evasive. The truth is, I've had a lot of other things on my mind. I'm trying to secure a future here for all of mankind. I can't let trivial security concerns get in the way when people like Bill Tagger want to see me fail. No, you're my best warrior, Adam. And I, and I trust you. I know the loyalty you've shown me will only continue as we take this fight into the future. Because that's what's really important, isn't it? The future. Yeah, he, he does this all the time. He tries to turn the conversation into something completely different. You have to refocus again. Boss, I think we're getting sidetracked here. If you want me to win this war for you, I need to know how badly we've been compromised. I need to know what was in that data stream in case our enemies accessed it. You think they could have? I see your point, son. That might be bad. I just wonder if you're being a bit paranoid here, fixating on details that aren't critical. I mean, are you so shaken up by what happened six months ago by your failure to make a difference then that you can't roll with the punches anymore? Damn it, Adam. I brought you back in today because you have an immediate crisis to deal with. Questioning me about things that don't matter isn't going to bring Megan back. And defend? With all due respect, sir, I am trying to do my job. The job you hired me to do. The job you even brought me back in for tonight. But it feels like you're getting in the way. Especially when you start bringing Megan into this. I'm not getting in the way. I just... Okay. Okay, look. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm the one overreacting. The data you're so nervous about is little more than a bunch of routine fact-finding reports, the kind of stuff I deal with every day. Megan pointed me in a direction and I followed up on it. That's all. And now that I've shared this much with you, I have to ask how your knowing the fine details will keep the rest of us any more secure. Can't you trust me to take care of things from here? Defend again and success. Boss, six months ago, mercenaries knew stuff about this company that I didn't and used it to get past my security measures. I don't really care what kind of secrets you and Megan were keeping back then. I just want to make sure they don't endanger us again. Adam, I didn't mean to imply... You're right, okay? You're right. I, I really shouldn't keep this information from you. I just hope you'll understand why I did. All right, look, the truth is I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. 
Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look, I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean, sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. When you're ready, come back and talk to me. We need to discuss our next move. Wait. Oh, I got that. 2,000 XP. Got 1,000 just for asking what was on his computer. Nice. So you can skip stage four if you have um, the KC. You can use pheromones and it instantly finishes it on round three. But I don't have KC because I refuse to buy it. You, you don't need it. You really don't. It's like, it's basically it's two points that you're just spending into into something you hardly ever use. So it's not really worth it. Yeah, so all these emails that you get here are, um, just, yeah, so his parents aren't my birth parents. That's basically, the mother was sterile according to these old medical records. Instead carries no phenotypes types either. Mother Margie Arthur Adam Yeah, so this is this this information here is all Yeah, it's it Adam's background isn't really it doesn't add anything to the story for me personally. It, it, you you don't need to know his background because it doesn't really it doesn't it doesn't do anything to the story, you know? So yeah, it's 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 the same as um as Megan's background. You know, you, you don't you don't need to know where they came from or where they grew up. So basically his mom and his dad or his foster parents worked at the White Helix Labs to pay for his wife's or his mom's medication. She was an antidepressant since fourteen. That's that's saddening, isn't it? Uh White Helix Labs burned down, all its files were lost. So, they worked for a lab that was burnt down, ran, you know, mysteriously, and uh, and then all of a sudden, Adam popped out of existence, which is quite funny. So, here's the thing. One minute Adam's in existence, and the next, the Jensen's have themselves a bouncing and healthy five-year-old. That's when they pull their vanishing act. Um, Jensen's had tried adopting kids for several Michigan agencies, but... Margie was deemed unfit as a parent. Next thing you know, they have Adam. Yeah, that's very suspicious. I mean, I guess being an antidepressants, you're not exactly in a state that you can look after a child, are you? Which is sad. It's, yeah. Makes, makes my heart hurt. I know that feeling. Um, And this is about his psych evaluation from SWAT, why he was discharged or fired for being... Yeah, so basically he's like, whoever wrote this obviously hated Adam. And apparently he um, he has problems with authority figures, disregard for chain of command, anger management issues, and potential PTSD. Um, and this guy's like, here's the thing, the evaluation was out of fiction. I'm thinking of pissed off superior one to Jensen of the Force and had the evaluation worded. Like, like just cause. Most of the rank... Most of the rank and file I spoke to respected and liked Jensen. They thought he was a real straight shooter, even though SWAT incidents soured his reputation a little. Still, even my source liked him enough to want to keep his psych evaluation buried. Wow. So whoever wrote that letter is a dickhead. Or whoever... You know, again, this doesn't really play into anything, because... This is to do with Mexican town massacre, but again... You don't know anything about it now. This is it. He was obviously set up for some for some reason. I mean, he did refuse to shoot a 15-year-old boy. And then he went on to Wayne, and then Wayne shot him, and then old Wayne's like, oh, I'm super depressed. But yeah. Again, it's... I have never really cared for the Athena information. You spoke to Saraf. It's meh. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarif Spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride talking. 
Still, get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't. So, this whole reading... Yeah, if you don't read the information on the computer, you can't f get the next quest. The next quest is until you come back later in the story. Basically, you come to Detroit twice. This is the first visit, and then you come back later on for a second visit, and then it triggers... Um, what was the side quest called for this? Oh, I didn't... Uh, Um, no, it's not here. That's weird. Thought it would have triggered a side quest. Yeah, you, you get a side quest basically, but it's missable. And I find it weird that they have a um, a side quest relating to Adam's background that is completely missable. It just goes to show that you don't need to know it, otherwise they would have added it in the story. But you know, but you you don't need to know where Adam came from. I mean, it is very suspicious that he has like one hundred percent. No, not 100%. He has, he has, his augments don't get rejected, basically. He should be on neuropazine, but for some reason his, his orgs take his body better than everybody else. In fact, he has no rejection, which is, is that her little bag? Ah, oh. That's random. Very random. Can I knock Athena out? No, oh, can't. That's a shame. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Henshaw Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company. Seraph Industries was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development. Self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper. Another thousand XP. Nice. I always find it weird though, like um I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, he's he talks about self self evolution, which I don't know, sticking robot parts into my own body doesn't doesn't sound like evolution to me. You know. It's I like could giving yourself robot arms count as uh, as self-evolution? Surely an evolution should be more biochemical than instead of biomechanical. Sounds about right. I used two words that I've uh, not used in my vocabulary for a long time. Yay, go me! Yeah, I, just, I don't I don't see how sticking robot parts into your counts as evolution. You can, you're not evolving. You're just upgrading. I mean, I don't have robot legs. I don't, I don't think I would like robot legs. Anyway, get the fuck out of here. Jensen, the boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hengsha. You've been there? Probably not. I, live there. I spent three, maybe four years. Just shit old. City, and most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? Uh, yeah. I thought I was. How long is this gonna take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Don't worry, we'll be there before you know it. Yeah, when you click um, ready to go, it tells you if you have unfinished side quests, they will be cancelled. So before you forward to Hengshar, you have to do side quests or you can't finish them. I don't know why I'm watching this.
Jensen, you might want to get ready. The jewel of the Yangtze approaches. Son of a bitch. I'm supposed to find answers in that. Hey, twice the scum and half the space. Hang on, we're going in. The address you got off that Merc, Hengsha Court Gardens? It's a bit of a walk from here in the Yuzhou district, but I figured it might be best not to drop you too close. In case Barrett only gave up the address knowing I'd walk into another trap. It's the kind of thing I'd do to an enemy. You want my advice? Just find out who lives there and get out. 